Well, a warm welcome to this talk, and I think it's really quite an important one. Now, Germany have just amended their administration techniques for the vaccine to include aspiration, drawing back on the needle to make sure we're not on a, in a blood vessel, following what they're doing in Denmark. In the United Kingdom, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, we're not doing that. So in my view, all those countries are doing it wrong. So if you live in any of those countries, please forward this along to your uh, elected political representative because we need to get it changed. Now, I'm going to give you the full evidence for this. If you don't want to post them the video, just post them the links that I'm going to post below with, with the evidence in. Now, let's just get some uh, background on this. Um, this, is, uh, this is Kyle, then we'll hear from Nick and Adam, and they all suffered severe life-changing complications after what I believe to be inadvertent intravascular administration because they got the taste straight away. Listen. With the sore arm. And then for me, it was a little bit interesting because as soon as they kind of injected it, I had a weird um, metallic or like saline taste in my mouth develop. He put the needle in and I feel like I instantly said it. I mean, my circulation would have been going nice and brisk because of my walk and I hadn't waited long. The appointments were running to time. So it felt instantly. I said, oh, I've got a strong chemical taste in my mouth. And... Um, he just made a sort of non-committal sound. The first initial thing was having the taste of metal in my mouth, which was like happened like almost as soon as I had the shot. And so we're, talk we're talking seconds. Yeah, yeah, like seconds after I'd got it. With the and many thanks to those uh, courageous people. Now, the only way I can think that um, the vaccine will get from the arm to your mouth in a few seconds to be tasted is via the intravenous route. Now, I'm just going to show you a few pictures now, um, because a lot of people don't seem to think that the deltoid muscle has got, uh, has got any blood vessels in, so, so that you can't possibly give it, give it into a vessel by mistake. So let's just look at that. Now, this is from a, an online site. And we see here, so this is the top of the humerus here. Uh, that's the clavicle. So we, we can see clearly this is where the deltoid muscle is. And uh, the red are the arteries, the blue are the veins, and the yellow are the nerves. So we can clearly see that there's veins there and arteries there. Um, so that's good and interesting. But if you live in the UK, and I don't know about the United States, probably to a, a similar extent or lesser extent, but if you want to know about anatomy, this is your book. Gray's Anatomy is the definitive text on anatomy. So whenever I would have uh, anatomical <laughs> arguments or disagreements with anyone, you'd say what's in Gray's and whatever goes in Gray's is correct. So let's look at some of the pictures from Gray's Anatomy. And here we see it, so top of the humerus, deltoid muscle. And here we see posterior circumflex, humeral artery, and veni uh, comitantis. That means associated veins. Now, this is what we typically have. So we have the artery here and the veins, and this is under the deltoid muscle. So in this, so yeah, you could, you could injure a muscle, uh, a vein in the muscle itself, or you could hit one of these big ones if you went too deep. Now, these associated veins, what typically happens is you have, a, you have an artery and then you have two veins on either side of it. This is what happens all over the body. So the pulsation of the artery helps the venous return. So this is a very typical anatomical layout. Why should the deltoid be any different? It just doesn't make any sense. And it isn't. So that's from Gray's Anatomy. Those vessels are clearly uh, there. And as, as we said, there's, there's smaller vessels in the muscle itself as well. Uh, how, why do I say there's vessels in the muscle as well? Because if there wasn't, it wouldn't across. If there's no blood supply, it'll die. If you tie an elastic band around your finger by mistake and, your finger, and then you forget about it, your finger can die because it loses its blood supply. But be careful not to do that. So that's one picture from Gray's Anatomy. Here's another one here. Again, the humerus here. I mean, here we see the anterior circumflex humeral artery. And as we know, when we have the arteries, we have a vein on either side of it as well. It's just that it's not shown in this uh, particular diagram. So clear from Gray's Anatomy about the venous anatomy here. And here we have the uh, cephalic vein. And here we see this vein draining into it. This is the deltoid muscle here. So if the needle went in here, it could hit that vein or that artery clearly drawn in Gray's anatomy so the vein there from the deltoid area draining into this cephalic vein 
that drains into the um, superior vena cava that drains into the into the right side of the heart that goes through the lungs and everywhere in the body going straight back to the heart it's the the, the, the you can't argue with anatomy it's just basic that's just basic uh, science now let's look at where this has uh, come from and this report is from here uh, this is this is the uh, the robert Koch institute which of course is the definitive uh, thing in uh, germany and uh, you can translate all that as well i've translated the relevant uh, sections and ferdinand has helped me and here's here's the relevant here's the same one from denmark as we said the, the danes are now and have been for some time recommending the same thing but this is the big this is the change today from the uh, german from the german guidelines so let's look at that uh, this is from the German Vaccination Board, which literally translates as Standing Commission for uh, uh, for Vaccination from the Robert Koch Institute. Now, go to page... Now, that was released 17th of February, so it just changed. Just, uh, just uh, updated this guideline. Now, uh, this may well have followed... Uh, I, did a, an art, uh, I did a piece on Deutsche Welle TV, which I think we can probably... Uh, you can probably catch a bit of that here, actually. When we talk about this, statistically possible. Well, I mean, it is definitely fast. You, I understand, are concerned about data that is showing that vaccines have not been <clears throat> correctly administered. Problems with the syringe and the injection itself. Tell me more about that. Yeah, what I would like to see is is an additional uh, part of the procedure added to the vaccination program. So what we actually do as nurses in hospital, we inject a syringe into someone. And then what we always do in an intramuscular injection is we'll just draw back a little bit like that. And then if you're in a blood vessel, you'll get blood going into your syringe and you'll know it's in a blood vessel and you'll know not to inject it. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very rare complication, but we always aspirate for injections in hospital. But then a few years ago, the World Health Organization said you didn't need to aspirate for paediatric vaccinations. And this seems to have been extrapolated into national guidelines in, in the Europe, in the United States, in the United Kingdom. But it's been specifically changed in Denmark, where the government is officially uh, recommending aspiration before all vaccinations. It's being done largely in Taiwan, mostly in China. Large parts of uh, Thailand are also doing it. So what I would like to see is just the government saying you put the needle into the muscle, then you just do a quick aspiration. If there's no blood, then you inject it because there is some evidence that giving the vaccine directly into the bloodstream as opposed to into the muscle can increase the likelihood of these rare side effects that we see, such as the thrombocytopenia and the thrombosis and potentially the cardiac inflammation problems. So I would like to see the, the vaccination protocol amended to include aspiration just to eliminate this potential variable so that if the problems are still continuing after that, we know it's not caused by that variable. It would mean that the vaccination took a second or two longer to give, but I think that's a price well worth paying because I believe that would reduce the complications that we are seeing. And I think, uh, you know, to give an extra second, it's certainly worth um, not having to deal with any side effects for sure. Dr. Mm. John Campbell, as always, Dr. Campbell, good talking with you. We appreciate your insights tonight. Thank you. Thank you. So we made that recording with German television. When was that? That was the 13th of December. So it's good to see that the German authorities seem to have followed up on that, unlike the British authorities, which I'm going to uh, show you the disappointing result later on. So the German authorities are now recommending aspiration to make sure we don't give inadvertent intravascular administration. Here it is there, that's the bulletin, that's the reference. Check it out, it's on page 14. This is all there in black and white. The relevant paragraph can be found on page 14. But so page 14, last paragraph. And here it is, there's the direct uh, quote in German. If you're German, you'll understand that, uh, or Austrian. Um, but uh, for most of us, we'll, you'll look at the translation. Ferdinand translated it for me directly. Of course, I've checked it with Google Translate. Direct quote from the German uh, website here. This is the national guidelines now in Germany. Let's see what it says. The vaccine is to be injected only intramuscularly. Only intramuscularly. It must go into a muscle. We agree. 
and in no case intradermal would be into the skin we don't want to give it into the skin subcutaneous would be in the fatty layer under the skin we don't want to give it there or intravenous would be into a vein we don't want to give it in any of those so we agree with the German authorities in animal models Direct intravenous injection of an mRNA vaccine has led to myopericarditis, both clinically and histopathologically. There you go. So in animals, you give the mRNA vaccines into a vessel, you get myocarditis, you can get pericarditis or both myopericarditis. And that's been proved clinically in terms of the, the, the sick animal and also in terms of histopathology. That's looking at the heart muscle under a microscope. This has been doubly confirmed by both of these techniques. And indeed, we have looked at this research on this channel before. Um, although inadvertent intravenous injections are rare, we agree they're rare, but so are these serious side effects. During application of intramuscular vaccines, so they're rare, we agree. We don't know how many. Is, is it one in a thousand? Uh, is it one in two, three thousand? Probably, probably not rarer than that. Anyway, aspiration of the needle is a sensible precaution when vaccinated against COVID-19 and can lead to increased safety. Thank you, Ferdinand, for your translation and for that uh, information. So there it is. Now, this, the State Serum Institute of Denmark did this ages ago under the guidance of Professor Hoiby, who I'm going to play you in a minute, who's kindly been on the channel. So Denmark State Serum Institute. Again, these are the national authorities. And th this has gone through into the advice. So this is advice to now all Danish nurses, all Danish doctors get these guidelines. Immunisation is done by intramuscular injection into the deltoid muscle. Uh, in case of contraindications, vaccine into the deltoid muscle, the vaccine may be administered to the central section of the lateral muscle of the thigh, the vastus lateralis, of course. Uh, but based on a precautionary principle, principle we recommend aspiration before uh, injection. So again, um, lots of collaboration with what the Germans are now recommending and i'm going to give you a i can't i'm limited to how much stuff i can put in the uh in the comments below because you're only allowed so many words but i'll put in what i can anyway let's go on to listen to uh professor niels hoiby of uh of denmark and dr peter gillard who is a leading uh, pharmaceutical uh, scientist who both given evidence on this channel gentlemen thank you very much administration during vaccination and you're a, uh, 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 I think it could be said a pretty serious scientist who knows a bit, a bit about this so what is the conclusion about aspiration that we could use to get people interested in this video what what, what do we need to get across what's what's been done right what's been done wrong yeah I think the main issue is that you don't want this particles either the the, the, the adenoviral or the the micro or the mRNA particles into your bloodstream Mm -hmm. You should check for that. Um, you, don't, you don't want to have them in the bloodstream, you want to have them in the, in the muscle where you inject them. Yeah, so the way this is being done at the moment, vaccinators are sticking the needle in, but they're not drawing back to make sure they're not in the blood, in the blood system. Yeah. I mean, is that possible? Could that happen? If you, if you put a needle into a deltoid muscle, could it end up in a vessel by mistake? Um, very few occasions it can happen. And, uh, and, and you can even... Just hit a blood vessel on the way in or out so that you get some bleeding. That happens mm -hmm. a lot more often. Um, and basically, you don't want to have the particles hit hit the blood stream or get deeper into the into the body. That's yep. not where they are intended. Yes. So I can understand that if the very tip of the needle ended up. Well, I mean, uh, right from the medical school, I learned how to aspirate before you <laughs> vaccinate. And uh, when I saw what was going on. Uh, at the television, even our crown prince was uh, vaccinated in the wrong way without aspiration. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I thought, this cannot be true. And uh, several of my colleagues uh, contacted me and they said the same thing. And uh, then came out a paper in The Lancet in March where they reported an American, uh, uh, yeah, I think it was 65 years old female, who got vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. And she was, after a few uh, short period of time, she was uh, put into the intensive care uh, at the hospital. And uh, it turned out 
when they investigated it, that there was uh, uh, activity in the liver and in the spleen and also in the lung. And of course, also around the, uh, the, the, the shoulder muscle, uh, musculus deltoideus, where they had injected them in the lymph nodes. And to me, as a microbiologist who's working with, with, with people who get uh, sepsis, you know, sepsis here, mm -hmm. uh, this looked like a... Uh, uh, actually like a, a, a sepsis with severe uh, inflammation going on uh, universally and that could only happen if if something got into the bloodstream right away and I thought that uh, it must be one of these cases where actually by by chance they penetrated in the vessels and some of the vaccine got directly in the in the blood and I think that must be the reason they didn't write that in any article Okay, so that was um, Dr. Peter uh, Giard, who, who's developed, uh, who's, who's spent, well, his pharmaceutical career developing uh, microparticulate uh, medication. Uh, and uh, Professor uh, Niels Hoiby, who, who was the pre leading professor in Copenhagen, who actually got the guidelines changed in Denmark, although he'd be too modest to uh, admit that, but it's probably true. So... Um, I, I, let, me, let me just see, show you what I've tried to be doing here. I mean, I, I wrote to my, uh, my my MP correctly, passed it on, so 100% correct, uh, on, on to the vaccine minister at the time, uh, Nadine uh, Sahawi, uh, Minister for Business and Industry, but was also vaccine minister at the time. So I wrote with this information in and gave, gave the... Uh, gave the, uh, the, the argument that I made now, although it's more developed now. Uh, so uh, I was directly where I could get further information, um, but uh, this this is what he actually this is the bottom line here guidance published by the um, Public Health England states. There is no need to pull back on the plunger before plunging before the plunger is depressed to release the vaccine into a muscle because there are no large blood vessels uh, at the recommended site. So there you go. It's not necessary because there are no large blood vessels. Uh, no large blood vessels at the recommended injection site. So um, really, I'm going to have to write to Grey's Anatomy to tell them that they've been getting this wrong for the last few hundred years. So um, that's clearly, that diagram's clearly wrong. That one's obviously wrong. What are Grey's Anatomy playing at here? That diagram's obviously wrong. That diagram's obviously wrong. Unless, of course, uh, the British recommendations are wrong. I'll let you decide which you think is the more likely scenario. So I've tried, I've tried writing to, so I've tried writing to my uh, political representatives here. Please try and do the same. Thank you again for taking the time to write, and I hope you find this reply helpful, Mr. Uh, helpful to Mr. Campbell. No, I didn't find it helpful, Mr. Zarawi. Uh, or whoever the vaccine minister is now, um, I think it's completely wrong. And I've given the evidence, so I reappeal, reappeal for this guideline to be, guidelines to be changed. So um, we could go on there. There's so much more things we could talk about there. But I think I've given the, uh, the, the outline of the evidence there. Please, please pass this on. The references are all going to put them in, in the description. Please pass this on to your political representatives because we just need the guidelines to be changed, as in Denmark, as in Germany. And I believe it can prevent many of the tragedies, as we've seen with Nick uh, and uh, Kyle and, and um, Adam. And... Uh, many, many others who've written to me. Thank you for watching.